It sure. sounded like you, you, you sort of changed your, uh, your network to a pretty significant degree as you were making your wounds, your work. Like there, there were obviously people that you had to let go of. Like, how did you make those decisions? Like I call these anchors and sales, right? Like, like there's people that are anchors that are going to hold you back that you got to cut loose. And there's of course sales that will, you know, you, you, uh, you know, you cast up and it fills with wind and it, you know, takes you to your next uh, port of call sort of thing. Like, how did you, how did you go through the process of deciding you know, like who's, who's going to come along for the ride and who you got to let go of. I, I didn't have anybody in my circle at that point. I, I really didn't anybody worth having in my circle anyways. You know, I mean, I, that, that's not entirely fair. You know, I had, I, I had family members and things who cared about me, you know, things like that, but that's not what I'm referring to. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, what I actually started doing is not eliminating people from my life, but being very conscious about who I wanted in my life. And so I started attending conferences and started reaching out to people and connecting with them on social media, um, going to events, creating my own events. And then I just realized through, through that process, I started to look around and I'm like, man, I don't have any losers in my circle. Not because I actively cut them out, but because I was actively pursuing the right kind of people and high caliber men in my corner. And then the other thing I would say is trying to be valuable to those guys. Like I didn't feel, I felt really inadequate initially when I was trying to spend time with these high achievers and the men I was inspired by and, and, and looked up to. But I, I, I realized if I don't belong here, then I got to figure out a way to belong here. And what can I do? I can add value. How did and you the do that? thing that I did, yeah, the, the thing that I did is I just started making introductions. I mean, like I, I didn't have anything personally I felt like I could add, but I would listen. Hey, Rich needs, has this problem. He needs an introduction and, and Joe over here has this problem, but he can solve riches. So like, what if I sync these guys up mm -hmm. and I started becoming an, frankly, at the risk of sounding arrogant an incredible networker. And I was listening for problems. Um, I was listening for people who provided solutions. And then I was learning how to make those connections in the most effective way. And then just get out of the way. Like, that's it. Just let the chips fall where they may and get out of the way. And I've done that tens, if not hundreds of thousands of times at this point. And I've become pretty invaluable in, in some people's lives because I'm a champion for them. I look for their problems and I help them solve those problems through connections. I might not be able to fix anything, but I can make a connection to somebody who can. How did you figure out the importance of making those connections? Like, when was that, you know, like epiphany moment, like the frying pan to the forehead, like, wow, this is important. This actually opens doors. I, I don't know if there was a moment where I'm like, oh, this will work because that almost sounds like you're gaming it. Mm -hmm. And it might sound like I'm gaming it now as you're listening to this, but you just have to care about people. <laughs> like, that's it. I, I, I shouldn't have to say that, but it seems like I do, especially mm -hmm. in this like over marketing digitized world of trying to like game and manipulate every relationship that you have for your mm -hmm. benefit. But like, I care about people. You know, I, I, I want people to win. I want to see him thrive. Just like you said, you watched that video. You didn't know me at the time, but you're like, man, I hope this guy makes it because you care about people. Mm -hmm. And if you care about people, then you're going to get your own ego out of the way and your own pride. And I will say that got in the way. There was times where I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep score. Like I introduced Rich to Joe and they did this deal. And now Joe and Rich owe me, mm -hmm. man, that doesn't, that doesn't equate to care. That's manipulation. That's like, I, it's not even a gift. Like I'm trying to get something from you. So I, I don't know. I just, I've always cared about people. You know, I, I was raised by prim primarily a single mother um, and, and bless her heart. She, she's one of the most caring people I know. So maybe I learned it from her. I remember one story that we had this, um, we had this postman. He was, he was kind of a jerk. I remember him be, being a jerk. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and my mom, I don't know why I remember this story, but my mom like made it her mission to make that guy her friend. And he just seemed miserable. I remember that as a young kid, but she would on holidays, like give him a plate of cookies or put a cake out for him when he, when he brought the mail and over time, man, sure enough, like he became such a pleasant person to be around and he would smile and he would greet us. And I'm like, whoa, this is cool. And I think that's quite an epiphany moment for me of just treating people well and letting the results and the chips fall where they may when you do. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, since you brought up that thing about being raised by, um, by your mom, like what happened to your dad? Uh, so my dad and mom split when I was about three years old. Uh, unfortunately he got into drugs and alcohol. Um, and my mom decided, you know, she didn't want to raise me and my sister in that environment. 
to her credit, of course. Uh, Cause I think it would have been easier in a lot of ways for her to stick around and stay and just keep us in that environment. But mm -hmm. she pulled us from that environment. Um, my dad's a good man. You know, uh, we had our man, we had a lot of, a lot of challenges in our relationship. He died actually three years ago. Um, unfortunately. And I, he was in the hospital my mom called me and long story short, um, I was, I was driving to go see him and she calls me about 30 minutes out. She's like, where are you? I'm like, I'm coming. I got there. He died 30 minutes before I got there, mm. you know? And so, um, man, I never got to say goodbye. There's a lot of things that were unsaid between us. Um, and in another life, you know, we'll have those conversations. Uh, there's a lot of redeeming qualities about him, but you know, a lot of things that, uh, I think he could have done better. And I think, uh, if he'd be here in this conversation right now, he'd probably say the same thing. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to redeem. I don't know. This is a weird, I haven't talked about it like this, but I'm trying to redeem myself and in a way trying to redeem him and live for him and the decisions that I think in another life he would have made differently. Did he spend much time with you when you were growing up or was it mostly your mom? Yeah, that was mostly my mom, but you know, we lived in in different areas of the state, California, and then I moved to Utah. So I didn't see him a whole lot, but I saw him about once a year, maybe twice a year. Mm. Not a lot, but man, we had some good times. You know, we built Pinewood Derby cars together and did Legos together and watched uh, American Gladiator together. That was a big one. <laughs> like, yeah, that was a big show. And WWE. Man. Yeah, man. Um, so <laughs> we had a good the relationship. year old that's not on uh, TRT, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, we had a good, a good enough relationship as you could when you only see your father once a year, twice a year, maybe. And, and like one of the things that I've noticed as a general tr trend, because I've coached um, – probably well over a thousand guys now, like one-on-one, -on -one. whenever there's a guy that's been raised by a single mom, um, it always seems like they start life from a position of um, they're missing something, right? Like it's a bit of a disadvantage, of you know, they're uh, softer, they're a little more beta, they're more accommodating, they're humble to a fault. Um, did you find yourself um, in a position when you came in your like teen years, you know, like young adulthood where you had to sort of like figure that out. Like, how do I, how do I, uh, reconcile, you know, dealing with this feminine influence growing up with this need to be a man? I didn't, I didn't feel it to that level when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Um, I do remember vividly having a very hard time relating with other young men, like even my friends and I had friends, you know, I was social, I played football, with? I played sports. I don't know. I just didn't feel confident, man. Like, mm -hmm. I always felt like just some underlying level of inadequacy or I wasn't like cool enough or, you know, I didn't belong there and I was kind of just a visitor and just partaking, but not really part of the club. You know, mm -hmm. I, I didn't feel like I was part of the tribe. I kind of felt like the token guy who was just like kind of hovering around and, mm -hmm. you know, but I was a popular kid. I was athletic, you know, so from the outside looking in, you think, oh, that guy's got it all figured out. And I had some real self-esteem issues. I mean, even 10 years ago, maybe even less, even having this conversation with you, I'd be intimidated by it, you know? And I think a lot of these guys that grow up with overly feminine influences in their lives misinterpret assertiveness, strength, uh, conviction for, you know, being an asshole or, or overbearing or dominant. And I don't see that anymore because I've been able to build that confidence over time where I look at somebody like yourself or other people I've had interactions with and think I'm not intimidated. Like I'm impressed, you know, I'm inspired. Um, and I love having conversations like this. Mm. Hey guys, I really hope that you enjoyed that short clip. If you did consider supporting the creation of content by checking out my supplement line pinned in the top comment below of this video in the comments, there's a link to the unpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop. Uh, when you click through, you'll be able to land over here and the entire lineup is broken down by category that it performs best in, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, your foundational essentials for health, immune health, performance, and testosterone support. If you check out with coupon code ALPHA10, you'll get 10% off on your first order. There's also the option to use the subscribe and save model where regular shipments will be sent over to you on a regular basis, and that gives you a little bit of a discount, and your supplement facts are always broken down over here. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have an awesome day. And again, check out that link. It's pinned in the top comment below in this video. Peace out.